Well, good morning. We are continuing in our summer series, How to Ruin Your Life, and today's lesson is Live for Myself. We will be learning from the life of King Solomon. King Solomon spent years feeding his selfish dreams and desires. In the end, he discovered that this kind of selfish living was meaningless. There is a tendency in all of us to focus on our own little world. We tend to put ourselves at the number one position, way ahead of others. That kind of selfish living never produces a life of joy. In fact, it usually does the opposite. Today we will learn how we can look out for the needs of others rather than living a life consumed with ourselves. First though, here are a couple announcements. Hello Grace Kids, we are so excited to announce that our Royal Rangers and Girls Ministry Fall Kickoff event that will be happening on Wednesday, August 26th from 7 to 8 p.m. here on our Grace Campus. Join us! for outdoor games, a devotional, and s'mores. Parents are welcome to stay and join us. Also, we can't wait to connect with you during our small group time on today at 4 p.m. Join us for a fun time digging deeper into our lesson and connecting with your friends. Okay, that's it for the announcements. I don't know what our, I don't know about you, but I can't wait for our game today. Hey Grace Kids, Mr. Rob here, and I'm gonna play today's game with you. We're gonna play a game called I Spy. I'm gonna show you three pictures. If you know where I am, post your answers in the comments below for a chance to win a prize. Are you ready? All right, good luck. Here's the first picture. Here's the second picture. Here's the third and final picture. All right, thanks so much for playing. And remember, if you know where I am, post in the comments below for a chance to win a prize. And now, I can't find Wacky Wally. Does anyone know where Wacky Wally is? Hi friends, you know what time it's for. Have no fear, Wacky Wally is here. Oh, Wacky Wally. Hi No, mi nombre no es Wacky Wally. Why are you speaking Spanish? Mi bazo exploido. Estoy burro gorrido. Um, Wally, you need to stop. First of all, you're butchering that, and I speak Spanish. Then you know what I that I said. I have a new superhero name. No, you said your spleen exploded, and then you called yourself a fat little donkey. Oh, I guess my Spanish is a little rusty. No matter. I am no longer Wacky Wally. Doing a lot of hard thinking, I've decided to become Numero Uno. A Numero Uno. That means number one. See, si, number one, as in me. I'm number one. There are tons of people that are always whining and asking me for help. Wally, can you bring my cat out of the tree? Wally, my grandma fell and can't get up. Wally, my... Grandma fell on my cat. And you want to know something? I'm sick of it. From now on, I'm going to be my own personal superhero. I'm going to make myself number one above everybody else. That's not good at all. You're only going to hurt yourself. I'm hurting myself? <laughs> Nonsense. Damn. And besides, what's wrong with putting myself first? Forget everyone else. Putting yourself first is called selfishness, and selfishness is a sin. Think about all those times in your life when you needed help. What if everybody around you was just worried about their self and ignored everybody else? You'd be pretty mad, right? Well, yeah, I would, but, but this is different. I'm trying to do something important. I'm trying to make myself happy. Your happiness isn't going to last forever. And the Bible tells us that living only for ourselves is totally meaningless. 
meaningless. I, I don't want a meaningless life. I'm supposed to be a superhero. You've got to help me. How can I live for others? That's exactly what we're learning in our lesson today. We must follow Jesus' ex Jesus's example on putting others first. He prayed for others, he served others, he fed others, and way, way more. If you want to live for others, you have to be a servant, just like Jesus. Oh, I will. Jesus is the greatest superhero of all time. I'm going to be a servant just like him. Is there anything I can do for you right now? You can hang out backstage for me. We have to get on with our lesson right now, but... You got it. I'll go backstage and, um, vacuum. No. I'll well, go vacuum well, I didn't, and clean I didn't things. Say, I can clean things backstage. And then I'll mop clean. the floors, and then I can that's, scrub the tiles. That's not what I and meant. I'll mop and vacuum and cleaner. No. I'll see you later, boys and girls. I've got to go clean something. Bye! Woo! Well, bye, Wacky Wally. We'll see you next week. Hi, Miss Julie here with today's Power Verse. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others as better than ourselves. Philippians 2, 3. All right, you ready to say it with me? Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble, thinking of others better than ourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Awesome job. Now here are a few of our friends to help us memorize the verse today. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble of thinking of others as better than yourself. Philippians 2, 3. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Philippians 2, 3. Hey Grace Kids, today's Bible lesson is about a man named Solomon. Now Solomon was a very young man when he became the king of Israel, and one night God appeared to Solomon and asked him, What do you want? Ask and I will give it to you. Solomon answered, I would like you to give me wisdom. I want to be a wise ruler so I can govern this nation of yours. Now God honored Solomon's request. He got, gave Solomon great wisdom to lead and guide the nation of Israel. Now since Solomon hadn't been selfish and asked for gold or riches, God decided to bless him with all of that as well. Over the years, Solomon accumulated a lot of riches, gold, and power, and Solomon became a very popular king. But Solomon ended up letting a lot of that go to his head. He started becoming very selfish and self-centered. He put himself as number one in his life and gave himself whatever he wanted. He thought to himself, I will give myself whatever I want. I will try everything. And that's exactly what he did. He gave himself everything he wanted. He wasn't happy with a little. He wanted a lot. He even married hundreds of wives. Why? Because he could. He was a king and he gave himself whatever he wanted. Now, you might think that this made him very happy. You might think that living for himself allowed him to have more fun and be happier than anyone else around him. But that is not what happened at all. In fact, the opposite happened. Instead of becoming happy and joyful, King Solomon became very sad and depressed. After all, he was living for himself. Life was all about him. Now, King Solomon wrote a book that is in the Bible. It's called the Book of Ecclesiastes we can read what King Solomon learned about living for himself. In Ecclesiastes chapter 2, Solomon talks about how he lived for himself and gave himself whatever he wanted. This is what Solomon said about that. Meaningless. All of it was meaningless. Solomon learned what we're going to learn in our lesson today. Living for yourself will definitely ruin your life. Rather than living for yourself and putting yourself as the number one most important person, you must think about others and work hard to help others. Hi friends, today we're talking about another foolish mistake that ruins our lives. That mistake is living for ourselves. Too many people put themselves as number one, the most important position in their lives. 
They live their life as though to say, I'm number one. And all they think about is what they need, what they want, and what they deserve. Have you ever seen someone like this? As they, as they live for number one? Perhaps you've seen them at school when they're lining up and that person cuts in front of you. Doesn't feel very bad, but they're being selfish. Perhaps you've seen them in your neighborhood when they're trying to choose a game and that person has to decide what game that you're gonna play. That's always what they want to play and it doesn't matter what anybody else wants to play. Perhaps you've seen them in your family. Your brother or sister will not share things with you. They're only the ones who play with their video games. Nobody else, just them. There's a big problem with living their life as number one and living for ourselves. Putting ourselves first is called selfishness. Selfishness is a terrible way to live. Selfishness says, I'm number one, and selfishness only looks out for me. Selfishness doesn't care about how many other people it hurts or anyone else's feelings. Selfishness is a foolish mistake and it ruins our lives. Selfishness decides to buy candy instead of giving to offering to help missionaries. Selfishness decides to only hang out with people you like instead of people who need friends. And selfishness decides not to share and keeps everything for themselves. Selfishness is all about living for themselves. After all, I'm number one. God didn't create us to be selfish people who only live for ourselves. Solomon found this out in a very, very hard way. He lived his whole life with the attitude, I'm number one. He only thought about the next big house he was gonna build for himself, that next pile of gold he was going to get for himself, and how many things he could do to make himself happy. Sadly, he learned living for himself was meaningless. It was a sad end to King Solomon's life. And God doesn't want us to live a meaningless life. He doesn't want us to live as though we're number one, not at all. God wants us to think of others, not just ourselves. I must follow Jesus' example and put others first, everywhere. Instead of saying I'm number one, Jesus showed us that others are more important. He prayed for others, he helped others, he healed others, he fed others, and he even bled and died for others' sins. Jesus didn't live for himself. Jesus lived in a way that put others ahead of himself. It's not easy, but we must follow Jesus' example. He never once demanded that people treat him as a king. That he was. Instead, he took the role of a servant and put others first. And himself last. Can we imagine what a group of kids would look like if they lived like that? Others first, me last. I imagine that every kid in the city and the world would want to come to that church because they knew that they would be treated with kindness, love, and care. It's time for each of us to stop living for ourselves and be like Jesus and begin to live for others. So let's pray and ask God to defeat that selfishness that's inside of us. All right, everybody go ahead and bow your head and close your eyes. God, thank you so much for today. Thank you that you've shown your grace and love towards us, God, and our amazing example of what we should be here on earth. I thank you so much for that and that we will defeat the selfishness that's inside us and that we'll be just like Jesus, serving others and not thinking about ourselves. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. And everybody says, Amen. All right, friends. Well, I'm going to send you off to Miss Nikki, and she's going to close it out for us today. But I'll see you next week. Bye, friends. Thanks so much, Abby, for sharing with us why we shouldn't be selfish, but to look out for the needs of others. We need to live a life that is not consumed with ourselves, but one that focuses on how we can be a blessing to others. If you would like to discuss more about not being selfish as a family, you can download our parent resource sheet from our Grace Kids webpage. As always, we look forward to connecting with you during our small group time on Zoom today at 4 p.m. Hope to see you there. Have an amazing week.